Dean and Sheena on air. Well, this is this is quite a good one to start with. This song is called No Strings Attached Romance, and it's on my acoustic EP, which you can get on iTunes and all those downloading sites. And it's a bit of a Vegas story. So if any of you have been to Vegas, I tend to believe that everyone comes with a bit of a Vegas story when they've been back. Whether they're willing to admit it or not is a whole different thing, but <laughs> I wrote mine into a song. version on iTunes because before before doing my debut debut album which will be coming out very very soon I had only ever released acoustic music because that's all I was really I was doing in my live shows it was just me and a guitar so there is an acoustic version of this song 
and it was actually picked up by Mark Forrest at the BBC and he played it across all the local BBC radio stations which is pretty crazy and uh, it was chosen as best of the best by BBC introducing which is which is nuts but <laughs> and um but this one's going to be on the album and we've done it as a full band version and then the acoustic version is going to be on there too especially um, because they're all great musicians and they all write songs and they're just fantastic and this is one of the 
first songs that I ever actually heard when I was in, in America a couple of years ago, and this is what really got me into them. This song is called Colder Weather, and it goes like this. <laughs> country show on the BBC because um, I sent her a couple of MP MP3s of what I'd done this was I think last year 
um, now. And um, she really liked this one, so she ended up, even though it hadn't been released, I said, okay, yeah, you can play it, it's fine, I don't mind, it's okay. I don't mean Marie quite, you don't really say no. <laughs> um, but this one's going to be on the, on, the, on the debut album, and what's kind of cool about that is that, um, I had this vision all along that I really wanted it to be played with um, a bit of a bit of fiddle and stuff like that on it, and it's just so crazy to be hearing it exactly how I imagined it. But you guys are getting the acoustic version tonight. <laughs> go any further than that one date but um he took me into this music shop and i'm a huge elvis presley fan and he took me into this music shop and he played guitar and everything he said oh you know i want to play you a song i want to play you a song and of course i was like oh my god you know this is so cool and he sat down and i we'd been talking about you know elvis and all the stuff that i i was into and things like that and he just sat down and he started playing suspicious minds and i just like died <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's where that's where that line in that song in the song comes from <laughs> Well, this one's called Two Ships, and this one's going to be on the on the album. 
as well. I've done this one quite a lot in, in my live shows, but again, this one's never actually been officially, officially released until the album, the album comes out. But um, there's a bit of a weird story behind this one. It's, uh, it's, all, about, it's all about a conversation that I had with an ex-boyfriend um, of mine. He called me up this one time out, completely out of the blue. I hadn't spoken to him for a really long time. And um, he said that he wanted to have a coffee with me and just catch up and all those kinds of things. So, uh, so I went along. And um, it was just one of those really weird situations because, you know, we, we've been really, really close and I'd written a lot of songs about this guy, a lot. Because the whole relationship was a mess and uh, it ended because he actually d decided that he, well, he ended up being gay. <laughs> 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 Which is kind of the worst breakup you could have, really. But, um, but we did stay really, really good friends and, you know, there's, you know, it, it took, a, obviously it took a lot. Of, of time for me to kind of you know get over get over something like that because this was a guy that I thought I was going to get married to and all these things so um and there's actually a song that I'm going to do in a bit that's um, all about when it ended but um we I can just remember sitting there in Starbucks um, talking with him like nothing had ever happened before in the past and it just seemed really weird to me that that often happens when you talk to an ex and you just talk to them as if they're a stranger or you know as if you've literally just met them when there's all this history behind it so that's where this song came from.
a song, but it's one of my absolute favourites, and I always love doing this one, one in shows. I'm a really big Dolly Parton fan, she's one of the first people that I really got into, and my dad, my dad was a huge, huge fan, he's the reason I got into, into country, country music, so this song, this song means a lot to me, and I'm pretty sure you're going to know it, so feel free to sing along, nobody's going to judge you. <laughs> Writers need somebody to come along and break their heart just so they can write a decent, a decent song, <laughs> which probably is true 90% of the time. But um, I don't know. The idea, the, the thought of that just stuck in my in my head, and um, 
the whole concept that you know you have to kiss a lot of, of frogs to find your prince, which is what people always say and things like that. So this song is called Someone to Break My Heart, but it doesn't say it's not actually as depressing as the title may <laughs> make it seem it is. <laughs> someone to break my heart. Oh god damn it, not another good sad song from this girl. <laughs> See, a lot of my songs are depressing. That's kind of my forte. It's <laughs> depressing songs. <laughs> not that my life is depressing or anything, I don't know how that happens, but... <laughs> but um, this one's called Teardrops Fall, and I, I wrote this one actually um, for one of my best friends back in high school, and this one's on my acoustic, acoustic EP. And she was going through a really, really tough time with a guy. Um, at the time, it was one of those situations where she couldn't really see the wood for the trees and how he was how he was behaving. So I didn't really know how to help her, and I didn't really know what to say. So I said, "Okay, well, let me try and write you a song, and I don't know, maybe you can either take the advice in the song or not. <laughs> but here's the song for you, and um, let's see what you think." And, and she did actually take the advice, and there's there's quite a funny funny line in the song, but I'll point that out when we get to it.
actually threw a shoe at him. That is a true story. <laughs> Why does it rain when teardrops fall? Why does heartbreak find us all? I know you'll be just fine. You won't get better in time. You may have thought it was meant to be. Acoustic EP is probably one of my favourite songs that I've I've ever written. It's one of my personal personal favourites. It's called I Should Have Realised. Uh... 
I'm on the sideline The gun goes off I should have run for my album and this has become a bit of a I don't know a fan a fan favorite or it's not really a cult song or anything but it's certainly one that um, whenever I do a show all my all my fans or people who've heard it tend to tend to sing along to this one and it has a pretty weird story behind it um, I wrote this one about a waiter that I met I didn't even meet him I just spoke to him at Margaritaville in Nashville which is a bar in Nashville and uh, all I know is I thought he was really good looking and I just, I don't know, it was just one of those, it was like a, a full on, like a teenage crush. And I knew I was never going to see him again, because why would I? I'm, I'm British, I live in the UK, he's just in a bar in Nashville. But in the summer of 2013, I went to Disney World with my friend Kylie, because I'm a Disney freak. And I ran into him again, this guy, Mr. Brown Eyes, from Margaritaville. And he, he we started talking, and um, he jokingly said to me that I should write a song about him because it was like something out of a film. And he didn't know that I was a songwriter or that I was a singer or anything. So I did. And I invited him to um, the Academy of Country Music Awards show that I did in Vegas last April. And I performed the song without telling him that I was gonna do it. And his face went about as red as these sofas here, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> and there is a video on YouTube, so if you enjoy public humiliation, please look up that video. <laughs> but it goes like this.
มูกกมูกมูกจีนและชีนา on air